UC Berkeley was forced to cancel an event featuring Breitbart News editor Milo Yiannopoulos after violent protests erupted on campus. Demonstrators reportedly threw a series of smoke bombs and flares, causing a fire. Some protesters pulled away metal barricades as police and riot gear guarded the building. UC Berkeley over a controversial speaker. One man was dragged out of his car and beaten. Thousands of students left yards of destruction behind here from piles of burning debris to smashed in ATMs. ABC's Lana Zak explains the president is now weighing in on Twitter. The University of Berkeley is rebuilding today. Overnight, violent agitators launched fireworks at police. A generator set on fire. The campus erupting in flames before a scheduled appearance of a self-described right-wing internet troll and Breitbart website editor Milo Yiannopoulos. We saw something that we have never seen on these camps before, and that was a group that came in uniform, covered in black. The demonstration started off peacefully. We will not tolerate racism or sexism. And then officials say about 150 people with black masks and small weapons arrived, inciting violence. The agitators launched fireworks at police, police firing back. A Trump supporter pepper sprayed. The university canceled the speech. Ianopoulos taking to Facebook. Because they're so threatened by the idea that a conservative speaker might be persuasive and interesting and funny and might swear, you know, might take some people with him. Um, they just have to shut it down at all costs. Supporters and protesters alike decrying what took place. I decided to come to see if I could get in, see what he had to say, and see the marketplace of free speech ideas come about. And it just got shut down by a bunch of people in black box. This is uncalled for. This is not going to get no message across. President Trump tweeted that perhaps Berkeley should lose its federal funds after the speech was canceled, but Berkeley's chief of police say no students were involved in the violence or vandalism. One of the issues that could make it all the way to the Supreme Court is the president's executive order on immigration. Tonight, here the new backlash and the White House in damage control. The press secretary today saying this was not a, quote, ban in the first place. But President Trump used that word himself, and it turns out so did the press secretary. ABC Chief White House Correspondent Jonathan Carl. In the face of mounting legal challenges and a growing political backlash, Secretary of Homeland Security John Kelly stepped forward today to defend the extreme vetting executive order. Well, this is not, I repeat, not a ban on Muslims. Despite reports that he was blindsided by the details of the executive order, Kelly insisted his staff helped write it, and he had seen several drafts himself. Well, clearly, um... It was obvious this, this whole approach was part of what uh, then candidate Trump talked about for a year or two. So we, we knew all that was coming. The Trump administration is battling these images. Families detained at airports when the ban on refugees and people from seven majority Muslim countries went into effect. Lives in limbo. And now two of America's largest companies, Amazon and Microsoft, are joining lawsuits to stop the order. Speaker of the House Paul Ryan said he wasn't even told about the order until it was signed. No one wanted to see people with green cards or special immigrant visas like translators get caught up in all of this. And so I think there was, regrettably, the rollout was confusing. In damage control mode, the administration announced 872 refugees will be allowed into the country this week because keeping them out would have caused extreme hardship. And the White House press secretary said today the order isn't even really a ban after all. First of all, it's not a travel ban. I think you heard Secretary Kelly, and I apologize. I just want to make sure I get this straight. But wait, the president himself called it a ban in a tweet just yesterday. I mean, he's using the, the words that the media is using. But at the end of the day, it can't... Hold on, hold on, hold on. It can't be... It can't be... Okay, Jonathan, thanks. I'll, I'll let Kristen talk. It can't be a ban if you're letting a million people in. If 325,000 people from another country can't come in, that is by nature not a ban. And Spicer himself has called it a ban twice over the past several days. It's a 90-day ban. The ban deals with seven countries. And this was the president on Saturday, the day after he signed the executive order. We're going to have a very, very strict ban, and we're going to have extreme vetting. We tried to ask about that today. Have a great Sean, day. I'll see you Sean, tonight. Sean, 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 the, the, the president also said a very strict ban on Saturday. He called it a very strict ban. Who, are, are, was the president wrong? The mayor of New Hope, Texas, says that people have shown, quote, overwhelming support after she came out as a transgender woman. In an open letter to her town, Mayor Jess, formerly Jeff Herbst, writes, 
as your mayor, I must tell you about something that has been with me since my earliest memories. I am transgender. She went on to write, I live my life as a female now, and I will be performing my duties to the town as such. With us now from Dallas, Texas, is Jess Herbst and her wife, Debbie. Mrs. Mayor and Mrs. Herbst, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you. Mayor Herbst, what prompted you to write this letter to the town? And tell us how the community has reacted to it. Well, I'll start with the second one first. The community has been, as I said, um, overwhelmingly supportive. Um, everybody has um, expressed their desire for me to remain as mayor. Everybody has, has been um, just wonderful. Um, the reason I wrote this letter was last year when I was appointed mayor, um, I was appointed, not elected. I was elected to my position as alderman and mayor pro tem, but our previous mayor passed away. Um, so I was appointed to that position. And I realized if I was going to be mayor um, that I had to let people know about this. I could not be mayor and be honest with the citizens uh, and be Jess. I had started two years prior to that um, with HRT and my original thought was just to kind of resign and slip off and live my life alone. But the town needed a mayor. Um, it was handed to me and so the only thing I could do is to tell everyone. I wanted to tell people face to face but that's impossible to do with even just a town of 700 people so i told all the council members one at a time um face to face by my planning and zoning board my family my friends i realized that once i told um the city that everyone in my life would know so i had to take a little time ahead of and make sure that people that i'd gone to school with that people that i worked with everybody knew once i had as many people out of the way that knew and understood. Um, I was down to just the general citizens and the only way to address them was to either go door to door, which was a daunting task, or to write this letter and post it on social media. So um, I wrote the letter, I rewrote the letter, I rewrote the letter. Um, <laughs> my wife looked at it, my daughters looked at it, um, and then I posted it um, about two weeks ago. Over a thousand police raiding 54 homes, businesses and mosques. A mass operation across central Germany in the early hours of Wednesday morning, culminating in the arrest of a Tunisian man suspected of plotting an attack. The 36-year-old asylum seeker found in Frankfurt now under investigation. He's thought to have recruited and trafficked for Islamic State here since 2015, building up a network of supporters to carry out terrorist attacks in Germany. He's among 15 others also being investigated. German police arrested three men in Berlin over suspected links to Islamic State militants, saying they plan to travel to the Middle East for combat training. Attack plans were at an early stage and no concrete target had been chosen. But prosecutors say the operation had smashed an extensive network. The Frankfurt suspect is also wanted in Tunisia, where he's thought to have been involved in the deadly militant assault against the Bardo Museum in Tunis. In Germany, nerves are still on edge after failed asylum seeker Anis Amri killed 12 people by plowing a truck into a Berlin Christmas market. The worst of a spate of attacks on civilians in the country. It looks like Hillary Clinton is prepared to be back in the public eye. According to the New York Post, the former Democratic presidential candidate is planning her comeback tour. The Post is reporting that Clinton is going to be on the speaking circuit again and she's writing a children's book. The Associated Press reported that Clinton will also be writing a book featuring a compilation of personal essays inspired by the hundreds of quotations she has been collecting for decades. Clinton commented on the project saying, these quotes have helped me celebrate the good times, laugh at the absurd times, persevere during the hard times, and deepen my appreciation of all life has to offer.
After another night of protests in Romania, a political response. The crowd of more than 150,000 braved sub-zero temperatures protesting against a decree which could see politicians convicted of corruption walk free. Now the country's president has joined the fight. Regarding the emergency decree, I've decided to file a challenge with the Constitutional Court. It is, in my and the presidency's legal advisor's opinion, obviously a legal constitutional conflict between the government and the judicial system and parliament. The decree was passed by the month-old government of Prime Minister Serene Grindanu. It decriminalizes misconduct in office if the sums involved are less than $48,000. Opponents see it as the biggest U-turn on anti-corruption reforms since Romania joined the European Union 10 years ago. Romanians are very proud about the fact that they have succeeded with this anti-corruption battle. They have managed to transform the country from being a corrupt, a sort of backwater which was often facing a lot of prejudice in Europe to a country which is a model nation for anti-corruption within the region. And they're very proud of that brand and they want to preserve it. These protests are the biggest seen in Romania since the fall of communism. We came to protect our country against criminals who tried to dismiss the rule of law in Romania, to protect our rights and interests, not theirs. The decree will come into force in little over a week unless the Constitutional Court rules against it. Opponents have promised to continue marching to stop what they call a blow against democracy. The White House has warned the Israeli government to stop announcing plans to build new settlements in the occupied West Bank. This decision could signal a breach in the very warm relationship between President Donald Trump and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Netanyahu's office announced Wednesday that Israel planned to build 3,000 new settlement homes in the disputed territory, which it has occupied since 1967. The new White House issued a brief statement in response, saying the new administration has not yet taken an official position on settlements and that new construction in the West Bank may not help achieve peace in the area. The Palestinian Foreign Ministry has urged the new U.S. government to start acting in a way that helps the peace process between Palestinian and Israeli forces. The ministry said Palestinian diplomats said the U.S. had repeatedly declared unconditional support for Israel while remaining silent over daily Israeli violations. It called on the Trump administration to reject Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's conditions for peace talks. Netanyahu said last week that Palestinians must recognize Israel as a Jewish state and accept full Israeli control of security in the region. Returning to Palm Beach as President Trump, tomorrow Air Force One will land at Palm Beach International Airport and there are increased air and road travel restrictions as you can well imagine with fresh security presidential level security in place as President Trump will visit his Mar-a-Lago estate this weekend. He may attend the annual Red Cross Ball there Saturday night. You may also see a huge military aircraft, Air Force transport plane, sitting on the tarmac at PBIA. It it can and often does carry equipment needed for a presidential visit, including his limousine, known as the Beast, and can often carry Marine One as well. Last night, veteran political writer Steve Clemens tweeted that some White House employees were fired and escorted out. He first tweeted, Reports coming in that some Secret Service manager level personnel forced to resign tonight and escorted out of EEOB. Later, he corrected himself, saying, the at Secret Service responded that they are not the agency that had management changes last night. Another agency did. I have confirmed that the Chief of Information Security at White House, forced to resign, was error in tagging him as Secret Service. Others, not sure how many, attached to White House security, cybersecurity, info security, resigned last night and escorted out of EEOB. Less than two weeks after he took office, and it's already clear that President Trump is going to take a very different approach to Iran. His national security advisor came to address reporters and gave this stern warning to the leadership in Tehran. President Trump has severely criticized the various agreements reached between Iran and the Obama administration, as well as the United Nations, as being weak and ineffective. 
Instead of being thankful to the United States in these agreements, Iran is now feeling emboldened. As of today, we are officially putting Iran on notice. Thank you. General Flynn took no questions. It's not clear exactly what on notice means. It's a clear warning to Tehran, and officials here say all options remain on the table. They also say that the warning came here from the White House rather than the State Department because of its importance. Yemen's devastating war continues to claim civilian casualties. General Flynn says Iran has been supplying Houthi forces who control much of the north of the country, including the capital, Sana'a. But what's particularly angered the new administration is a medium-range ballistic missile test on Sunday, which they say involved a missile large enough to carry a nuclear warhead. The UN Security Council's already met and discussed the missile test. The Trump administration believes it does not breach the landmark agreement reached in Vienna 18 months ago between Iran and six major global nations to limit Iran's nuclear capabilities to civil use only. But I'm told the whole policy on Iran is under review. Before he was president, Donald Trump said it was a bad deal. Already, relations between the US and Iran have soured since President Trump took office. Iran is one of the seven countries on the US visa ban list, and Iran's president, Hassan Rouhani, has labeled Trump a political novice. James Bayes, Al Jazeera, Washington. Following breaking news from Paris, a machete attack and shooting near the Louvre Museum created panic in the heart of the French capital. A French soldier shot and seriously wounded a man after he tried to attack another soldier. The man was armed with two machetes and carried two backpacks. The attack took place in a shopping mall outside the Louvre, one of the most visited museums in the world. About a thousand people inside were moved to safe areas. Elaine Cobb is near the scene in Paris. Paris. Elaine, good morning. Good morning. The chaotic scene unfolded just behind me here at the entrance to the Louvre Museum and the Carousel du Louvre, the shopping area. Video from outside showed security rushing in as alarms went off. Tourists waiting online to get in looked on with confusion. Some thought it was a drill. Here's what we know. Paris police say the man shouted Allah Wakbar, pulled out what's described as a machete and lunged towards the French soldiers. One soldier fired back, shooting the suspect in his leg and stomach. The attacker is alive but in grave condition. One of the soldiers suffered minor injuries to his head. Police say the man was also carrying two backpacks, which immediately raised concerns for possible explosives. The museum was closed as the bomb squad responded. A group of students from University of Georgia were looking at the Mona Lisa at the time when an alarm went off and they were told to evacuate. They waited two hours to leave the building. Visitors were cordoned off and inspected before being let out in groups. There has been heightened security at the Louvre Museum since the attacks on Paris in 2015. The identity of this attacker is not known, nor are his motives clear. But police say they checked the backpacks and no explosives were found.